Hi, my name is Peter Shaw and I'm an optometrist. I'm also the inventor of a patented method that radically improves eyeglass lens design for all prescriptions including progressives. Optometrists all over the world are embracing this new technology and positively changing the lives of their patients. For the first time in history of eyeglasses, we optometrists have a tool to eliminate the obstacle to efficient binocular vision that eyeglasses frequently cause. With it, we can dramatically improve the visual comfort and function of our patients, eliminate suppression, enhance stereopsis, and provide them with the ultimate in binocular vision with eyeglasses. In our short history, our lenses have been instrumental in the successful treatment of over 1,000 refractive amblyopes and, importantly, without patching. I often get asked, what got me started to initiate such an enterprise, taking on the establishment in this crowded ophthalmic lens world? Well, it was out of necessity. In my many years in private practice, I discovered the hard way that many of my patients had difficulty wearing the ordinary lenses that were manufactured by the big lens guys. So I started designing my own isoconic lenses using the optics we were taught in optometry school. This led me on a 10-year journey of discovery, research and development to facilitate the automated design of isoconic eyeglass lenses. I called upon my undergraduate training in math and computer science to assist my clinical expertise. Because I'm a clinical optometrist and not an engineer, I had a huge advantage of insight into the world of physiological optics and clinical efficacy. Further, I was able to develop a more accurate model that can accurately predict the exact effect from lenses and design lenses using the power of modern computing to eliminate the errors common with the simplistic paraxial equations that are still being propagated in ophthalmic education. But let's now talk about the science of binocular vision. Just because we have two functioning eyes doesn't mean they work together. Optometrists are deeply concerned about not only providing our patients with clear vision in each eye, but also to ensure that the brain can integrate the images together, what we call binocular vision. We know that specialized receptor cells in the visual cortex are responsible for integration of the left and right ocular images. These binocular integrating cells only respond when the ocular images are aligned, equally sharp, and of the same size and shape. In other words, the images must not only be spatially corresponding, but also dimensionally corresponding. When the binocular integrating cells are stimulated, our vision is more than just the sum of the parts. In fact, Dr. Robert Hess, the director of ophthalmology research at the University of McGill in Montreal, Canada, has discovered that visually evoked cortical potentials increase when binocular cells fire, and he refers to this as binocular summation. Binocular summation is the critical feature in establishing a permanent cure for amblyopia, eliminating suppression and enhancing stereopsis. When this happens, we get subsequently better depth perception and we have a fully functional binocular vision system. So, what's this got to do with eyeglasses? the eyeglasses that we routinely prescribe as optometrists. And I think we've all encountered patients who've had difficulty adapting to or wearing their eyeglasses. For an explanation, we need to look at the impact that eyeglasses have on the binocular vision system. We know from studying optics and clinical experience that eyeglasses magnify or minify images. And further, that the degree of magnification is a product of the refractive power and the characteristics of the lens design. You know, index, base curve, vertex distance and all that stuff. We like to call this static magnification. And a difference in the static magnification between the two eyes will interfere with the, the dimensional conformity and disrupt the binocular integration and therefore the summation. And when this happens, we call this sensory or static anisoconia. What we have also discovered is that surprisingly low degrees of magnification difference can disrupt sensory fusion and lead to suppression 
and the inability for an amblyopic eye to improve. Not surprisingly, the size of the suppression of scotoma is proportional to the degree of the anisocornia. In fact, half a percent is probably clinically significant. We also know another thing about eyeglass lenses. Spectacle lenses induce prismatic effect, and the magnitude is also due to the design and characteristics of each lens and lens power. Makes sense to me. We call this dynamic magnification. And to compensate for the influences that dynamic magnification have on the vision system, the wearer is required to make a vergence adjustment. Now, if the demand created by the eyeglasses is greater than the vergence system can compensate for, whether in magnitude or in time, in other words, getting there, then we have something that's called dynamic anisocornia. And we can make an estimate whether or not dynamic anisocornia is likely to be present by measuring the patient's fusional reserves. And what we've found is a number of things when we do this. We can make lenses that, that satisfy the patient's fusional reserve limits. And we need to do this because as we get older, our fusional reserves, especially the vertical ones, dramatically decrease. Now, lenses that I've designed for the first time ever allow us to correct not only the static magnification and prevent static anisoconia, but also to correct for the dynamic magnification and hence eliminate dynamic anisoconia. And what we call these are isoconic and isophoric lenses. I think in the ideal world, every pair of glasses should, should satisfy the requirements of the patient to have an isoconic and isophoric correction. The principal cause of these problems is, of course, anisometropia. And secondary causes would be muscle paresis and detached retina. Now, I've, I'm often asked, how much anisometropia do you need to trigger dynamic or static anisoconia? And I don't have a hard, fast answer for you, but I can tell you that we have thousands of patients who have less than one diopter of anisometropia who notice a big difference when switching to our technology. And if we think about that, it makes sense. One diopter could generate as much as one and a half prism diopters of prism in down gaze. And with a progressive lens, who wants to add a prism with vertical um, vergence adjustment? So by correcting these obstacles, this large yet sensitive cohort will achieve better visual comfort. Because all patients want to have better visual comfort. And as a point of interest, we have all been prescribing isoconic corrections in the form of contact lenses. So we've noticed that contact lens patients tend to be a bit more comfortable than eyeglass patients. Contact lens patients often have difficulty going back to eyeglasses, and the reason is because contact lenses are isoconic and isophoric. So now we can offer our eyeglass wearing patients the same visual comfort we've come to expect from contact lenses. So the kinds of patients that specifically benefit from our technology would be low myopes with minor degrees of anisometropia, new presbyopic lens wearers, amblyopes, patients who've undergone cataract surgery, patients with monovision, patients with astigmatism, patients with strabismus, and patients with maculopathies. Now, I often get asked why Shaw lens is available exclusively from optometrists. And my answer is fairly simple. Only an optometrist can tell whether a patient will benefit from binocular vision. Some patients are better off being monocular and only their doctor can determine if they're a suitable candidate. Also, Shaw Lens has distinct designs for each type of diagnosis. We can't determine from a prescription what the issue is, so we require some additional information about binocular vision function that optometrists can supply us with. At Shaw Lens, we work closely with our partner optometrists to ensure that the optimum solutions are provided. I suggest a frank discussion about our technology. In fact, all lenses occur in the exam room. This is where the importance and benefits of binocular vision can occur. This is the place where serious medical decisions are made. Lenses are, after all, a medical device. 
they're not just fillers to facilitate the sale of a frame. So, in summary, if glasses are prescribed, whether single vision, progressive or bifocals, for infants or seniors, and everyone in between, remember that we have two eyes and we need to ensure they work together as a team. Let's not be afraid to be optometrists. Thank you.